recorded on the 27th of February 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. All right, so here's your opportunity. Last question time. Where are we going to start? Let's uh, start with Kerry up the back. Over on that side. Yep, keep your hand up. Or it doesn't know you. Um, um, does sin always result in physical pain or can it be emotional pain without physical pain? Uh, it's a good question, Kerry. Um, can I firstly compliment on you? Many times when you guys are asking questions, you're asking personal, selfish, what I'd classify as selfish questions, and are and, uh, not based on principle. So what Kerry just gave us was an example of a question based on a principle. And if you understand the principle, then you'll understand a lot of things. Does that make sense? So it's far better to ask questions based on principle than it is to ask questions based on personal experience because the principle you can apply to many personal experiences. All right, so, so that's what we want to try to zone in on when we're asking our questions. So question here, yes, it, it, it is the question. So basically you're saying, is, is, are the results just emotional or are there also physical side effects of, of pain resulting from sin? Yeah. Yep. Um, okay, well let me draw this diagram for you and you tell me. So here's Kerry. Sorry Kerry, it might uh, be a bit basic description of yourself there. All right, so what's this one? Spirit, physical body and spirit body. And this is your soul. Remember, you are one half, so I probably should draw it as one half, right? Yeah, the theme. Right, so, so now when you sin, where does the sin, the effects of the sin reside? In the soul. In your soul. So, so when you sin, the effect of the sin gets added to the soul. Now, where does the energy for both of these bodies come from? The soul. From your soul. So the energetic flow is from your soul to each body. So what's the answer to your question? Well, it's going to have to be physical pain. Yep. In, so if you're As not, well as emotional pain. Okay, so if you're just yep. in emotional pain yep. and you're not feeling physical effects from it all the time or might be Kerry uh, like the reality is all should, all of us should look about 22 yeah right so why don't we because we're already experiencing the ravages of sin against our body and we see it as normal and we call it old age yep okay Thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so there are instant effects on our body when we, when we sin in our soul, but we call it, we label it things. Yeah. We label it old age, you know, wrinkles. Um, you know, we, we give it all this label, which is all n normal for the world, of course. But from God's perspective, none of these things should exist. You follow? Yeah. Yeah. And they are the effects. So one of the pains that you have which is both physical and emotional, is that you get old. Okay. Yeah. And that's a, that's a major pain that we all have and all experience, and that, that is caused directly by there being some kind of sin in our soul. Now remember, the sin could be against oneself as well as against others. So for a lot of us, it, it's stuff where we refuse to give up. We, we, we refuse to love ourselves. We want someone else to love us. So a lot of that causes a lot of our physical problems as well. Yeah. So yes, every single sin we commit has an emotional effect and a physical one. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Both, as both. Okay. Emotional you. effect and a physical one. It also uh, actually changes the wiring in your brain. It can also affect your genetic structure. <laughs> that makes sense, doesn't it? Mm. That's all physical body stuff. So, of course, any sin you commit 
will have different effects on the physical body. So some sins are going to so affect your body in all sorts of ways. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. It'll affect your muscles, your joints, your organs, your brain, the way your brain is wired, the way your uh, genetic structure is internally, the damage to your genetic structure that causes all sorts of genes that then get passed down to your children. All of that is caused by sin in the soul. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's a wide-reaching scope. Yeah. Uh, as to what happens when sin, sin's engaged. Thank you. Yep, good question. If we come, Bruce, you would. So hereditary defects, hereditary, are sins passed down from previous? Yes, and the way a sin gets passed down is that it's in the soul of the parents or one or both of the parents and, and then when they, give, they, they conceive a child, the genetic replication process of the child is determined to a large extent by not only physical factors that God has designed but also the emotional factors that exist within the parents. So if the parents have sin or, or emotions that are inside of them that affect the way they think and the way they act, those particular emotions will certainly affect the development of the child and even the development of its physical body. So it's actually what causes things like genetic deformities in children before they're born. That's also caused by sin. And is that reversible for the child? It is reversible, but it's very, very difficult to reverse because there are genetic deformities that occurred while the child was in the formative stage of their life, before they were even born, before they even had a will, and so they're going to have to be able to work their way through those particular passed down emotions in order to cure the problem, or get cured externally by somebody who helps them do that. But yes, they can be cured. Thanks. Yep. Every, every type of genetic deformity can be cured, but it requires you addressing the original sin that caused it. Yep. Which is where most people refuse to go, right? Yeah. Barbara, thanks. Just on that, so if um, a person with a deformity became at one with God, that deformity will disappear? Correct. Yep. And what's all this got to do with will? Can I ask you that? 